So at one point in this project, Diana said she couldn't even watch the video because it was stressing her out. <laughs> Why? Because it really looked, I've, what I've heard is it really looked on video like there was like no headroom for the boys with how we're lofting the beds and oh. that it just looked like really claustrophobic. Has she been here to see it in person? Well that's the thing, now she's been here in person, she's seen the boys like crawl up there, get down, sit up, and she's oh. like, in person, it's totally fine. <laughs> it's totally fine and so I'm like, okay, because there were some other comments too like, Ugh, like I just don't know about that, so. <laughs> So today, the camera adds 10 pounds. Yeah, the, the camera <laughs> loses 10 inches. But it's finished, so today we're going to show you the boys' bedroom, show you the before and afters where we started. It's This space has actually come a very long way. Oh, for sure. And so we'll show you the process, and uh, I don't know, I think it turned out pretty cool, and we'll show it to the boys too. All right, so here's where we're at. Um, I've been filling the nail holes on this wall so that I can prime and paint it. Um, Tom has been working on the door and window trim. Um, I had painted it all up ahead of time and we still have to do this door behind me and he said we don't have enough boards. <laughs> so he has to run to the um, home improvement store and get some more boards. And then I, I had also gotten a light, a wall sconce, just like in the girls' bedroom. They didn't have it in black, so I'm gonna have Tom spray paint this black, and then this is the other piece that goes along with it. And we're trying to get this wound up today. And then I also want to like make bedding for the boys, so they each have a twin size bedspread right now. Gage's is blue, and Corbin's is like a blue plaid. And so what I want to do is combine them to make two separate twins, but each have like half blue and half plaid. So it looks like they go together even though they never originally did. So our punch list is fairly long to finish up this room, but I think I'm gonna have the girls help paint and then I'm gonna work on some of this other random stuff. Oh, and I also got the prints, the monster truck prints that we're gonna use too. And so I have picture frames that were in the girls' desk area um, before we remodeled that whole area. So I still have those picture frames and I wanna reuse them up here, so I wanna paint them gray to match the wall too. So that's on the list as well. <laughs> so lots of little stuff to finish up, but we're just gonna get going and see how far we get. So when we moved into this house four and a half years ago, this space was I, a landing. I think it's almost been five. I think we're coming up on five pretty quickly. Yep, here. in April. So there was only one bedroom up here and all the kids were in there and then it just wasn't working out anymore. Right, yeah, because when we bought this, it was a landing and we kind of made this a little playroom, a little mm -hmm. toy room, um, which I think you did videos on back then. Yep. Yep. And so then we're like, well, we'll just move the boys out here onto the landing, girls in there. And that was fine, but still, you know, the long-term goal was to eventually have them have their own bedroom. Mm -hmm. So the boys' room. <laughs> so the boys' room, um, Gage is still in a crib. We're going to get rid of that. Yeah. What do we do the boys' room? I'm going to build one big bed the whole length and put two mattresses on it. And then I'm going to build uh, drawers, two drawers in underneath like the girls have. So it'll be four drawers under. Yeah. We'll get punched out, right? Because mm -hmm. the steps are going to come up, and so that's where you'll be walking. Yep. This will get capped because it'll be mm. the stairway. Yeah. This so one. this will all be wall. This will all be wall. To close in the staircase now. And then it'll be cut maybe back here. So the wall will go that way, yep. right here. And then that'll be closet door. Yep. So this past winter when we flipped the staircase and did that whole uh, stair flipping project, we were able to make two dedicated bedrooms up here. So this fall we finished the girls' bedroom, which was super fun, and we were really like happy with how it turned out. And then everyone was like, what about the boys? Like, <laughs> hello, the girls get this beautiful bedroom now, what about them? I think that we didn't really know when we finished the girls' room. I don't know that we really had a plan or a vision in mind for what we were going to do with the boys' room mm -hmm. because it's a fairly small room. Yeah, I think we just didn't know what to yeah. do. And and honestly, they weren't complaining about it. Like, no. their six and eight didn't really care that much. No, I think they still thought it was awesome that they had their own room. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I'm going to try an experiment. Um, this is a paint and primer in one. I don't know that when they say that, that they mean to cover new drywall, but it's a good quality paint. And so I'm 
So I'm just going to try it and see how it goes. And if it doesn't work, I guess I'll just go back over it again with primer. Um, I don't know. Time is of the essence, so I'm just going to see if this will work or not. And I will let you know. Okay, so these are the frames that I want to use in here, and I'm going to repaint. I'm just trying to decide what color to paint them. Originally, I was just going to do gray like the walls um just to kind of have them blend in because again it's a small room and i don't want to create like too many different things going on but now i'm kind of thinking that i should paint them the color of the bed frame so they do stand out just a little bit i don't know i'm not actually a designer <laughs> right so uh, they were black ikea frames that i painted this light blue color before um i think i'm gonna go with the dark blue and you know is what it is. <laughs> Adeline is our resident painter helper, right? <laughs> She's over it. <laughs> the board and batten is nice, but it is a pain um, to paint. It looks cool when it's done, but it's a lot of work to paint, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> so as we started looking at this space, and one of our big goals for it was that there would be some room to play but then also still have their beds in here. So that's when we started looking at, you know, lofting the beds. And again, though, what we kept running into was that there is just not a lot of ceiling height. I mean, when Tom stands up in here, his, he's 6'2", his head almost hits the ceiling. And so we kept going back and forth. Is there enough room to loft the beds or not? And Tom was very helpful, actually, in that process. Okay, so what I want to do is have Gage see if he could, like, lay on the mattress, like if he were going up there to um. sleep. Okay, Gage, will you climb up? You gotta be right between my knees and my hands. Okay. Whoa, 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 whoa. In the middle, in the middle. All right, you lay down? <laughs> Either, like, I don't know that I want to lay down. All right. <laughs> so, does that feel like you're too close to the ceiling, buddy? Mm, no. All right, Gage, I'm gonna It's kind of high, Tom. <laughs> okay. okay. I was very much against lofting them. Mm -hmm. I thought, no way, I, they're gonna hit their heads daily. This is just a terrible idea. Um, I persevered. But we tried I it. believed in it. <laughs> <laughs> so Tom went ahead and build, built them. We did move it out a little bit from the wall, so that helped to maximize the head space. All right, uh, good news, bad news. Good news, not priming the wall is totally working out. I was worried that when you looked at it, you'd be able to tell like where the mud was and that the um, MDF would soak it in differently. <laughs> nope, not the case. It's totally even. So um, I'm gonna keep painting on that. Not so good news. Just had to go have another root canal. The dentist said this one was actually worse than the one I had in November. Um, so it was, I don't know. So he's like, it might be pretty sore later. So I'm like, okay, I'm gonna, finish my talking <laughs> right now and then rest my mouth um, the rest of the night. So I still need to get some more paint on there. I still haven't done the boys' bed spreads yet, but Tom got the trim done. So I just have to patch that and it's done around the window too. So I just have to fill those nail holes and paint it. And it just, it's amazing. Once the trim goes on, it looks like a completely different room. So that's exciting. We also forgot that we were gonna find some kind of like tabletop for the top of those cube shelves for the boys to like play on so he's gonna figure out that all right we're getting the tabletop put in piece of plywood sanded edges so should we paint it light gray or do you feel like it's gonna get like dirty and but keep it bright until you can we, see the stuff that's on it i think we have to paint it a light color I, otherwise it's like super dark under here i know okay. we're gonna put lights in but all right otherwise if we don't paint it light i think this is just gonna be a dungeon all right. Legos. And actually, it'll probably be harder for them to find Lego pieces on a desk. Yeah, campus. that's. I did think about that too. So, oh, did she? Okie dokie. And then we knew we wanted to put some kind of railing on it, and so we kind of just. Well, I mean, we just started looking on Pinterest to see what kind of ideas, and so I saw the pipe railing, and I'm like, oh. That and would be some cool. people had asked, why did we not do PVC or plastic? Um, we wanted strength. We want it to be where they could hang on it and it's not going to come off. I think PVC or plastic would would eventually break. Yeah. It just wouldn't be strong enough. Um, so we went with uh, corrugated steel piping, threaded piping. Yeah. Um, we've never done pipe furniture before, mm -hmm. uh, but I think it turned out really well. 
All right, so I got the light fixture all painted black and then Tom's working on mounting it. We'll have to do wall anchors since there's not a stud behind there. And then we're doing the same thing we did with the girls' bedroom where we just put a puck light in it so it's you have to like push it on to turn it on. It's not actually gonna be wired into the wall, so. All right, the light is up and we are gonna hang one of these pictures underneath it. So we know there's not a stud there, but these are called monkey hooks and they work awesome. You can hang, there's different sizes is that, that actually, come. Is that actually what they're called? Yeah, they're called monkey hooks. Okay. There's, well, I guess there's different names depending on the brand, but I think that's the original. There's different sizes of them that come. Like I don't even have any of the really big ones, but we've hung like super heavy mirrors and stuff when we're staging houses with them and they work great and they make like a really small hole in the wall. And so um, basically you just push it in and then it hooks into the wall like that and then your picture hangs on it. So we're gonna do that here to hang up this picture. So the... So you just push it in where your hole is. Right, but... Where does it land height wise? It's it's like right where you put the hole in. Okay. And you don't have to like be strong. Like I put these in all the time. You don't need a tom <laughs> to install them. Oh, so really? It makes it super easy to hang stuff. So. Sweet. And then if you ever pull them out, there's like just a teeny tiny hole in the wall. We didn't put a puck light in it yet because I just worry. We have a bet on whether or not that light fixture is going to remain on the wall or if a child maybe the older boy will rip it off the wall and so tom's giving it two weeks i think it's gonna be fine our kids are not that crazy if i think it'll be what the the picture frame below we think will last 24 hours <laughs> so. well i'm just saying all right we'll keep you posted <laughs> all right i just got the curtain up so i want to show you it real quick it's um, what I did was I did the same thing as the girls bedroom and made like a faux Roman shade So what I did is along the top. So I just made a panel. It's a blackout curtain um, And I just cut it to width because of the material it is the edges don't really fray So it's not even finished and then I used fabric glue just to fold under the bottom and glue it Where it would have because it was too long. I Could have sewed it, but I didn't have the right color thread. So I'm like whatever. I'm just using fabric glue <laughs> um so along the top is one tension rod just through the casing of the top of the curtain. And then what I do is I put another tension rod um, like a third of the way down. And then I just pull this over it. And that's what creates that like faux Roman shade look. Like it's, it's so easy. <laughs> It's so easy, but I mean, we've had it like that in the girls since this fall and it works great. I mean, most of the time they just leave it in one position and so it doesn't even matter, but it's actually really easy just to like pull it down too if you want to have it dark. Does that make sense? I don't even know if I'm explaining this well, but it works really well. So the boys, ha I mean, the boys have seen bulk, the bulk of this, but they haven't seen the all the trim up mm -hmm. or the light stuff, the decor, the pictures. They haven't seen any of the cute stuff. So. Yeah. All right. Cover your eyes. All right, cover your eyes. Keep your eyes covered. All right, hold on. I got you. Keep your eyes covered. Keep your eyes covered. All right, ready? Yeah. Open your eyes. <laughs> wow, this is awesome. What do you think of the monster tracks? It's awesome. I just <laughs> you like that one? The blue one? Yeah, that's pretty Check cool, huh? Check out your little fort underneath for Lego building. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> so we did decide then to put a cube sh shelf at each end. So those are like the boys' dressers. We've done this with the girls and it'll be more than enough storage for them. But I like, these are actually the little bit smaller cubes, like smaller than when you get at Ikea and they're perfect size. The big ones just, they fit too much stuff. So these I'm excited about. I think it's gonna work really well. And then in the middle, um, we did the smaller ones and it's cool how Tom made kind of like a table out of it then with a piece of wood. And then um, I just got some dollar store bins to put their toys in. So mm -hmm. hopefully this is gonna be Lego central up yeah. here now. Yeah, and the nice thing like, so they're, they're building Legos everywhere throughout the house. And then they always have to take it down and move it or something if it's like on the getting table. a little excessive. Yeah. So this way they can at least continue building and not have, like nobody can tell them to, hey, can you move all this off of here? Yeah. 
And then we did put the puck lights underneath, which are just battery operated little push button lights. We did four of them under there. So it would feel kind of like a fun little fort. Yeah. So they love it. They, I mean, we really wanted just because we're all home all the time now was a place where they could go play, just be loud, do their own thing. And they're up here all the time now. So I feel like we did Mm -hmm. accomplish that and so what do you figure cost wise what did we have into the lumber and then into the two dollars okay. <laughs> <laughs> sorry the lumber and what and the piping um i think the piping was like 40 50 dollars mm -hmm. we ended up returning a lot of piping because i like mapped it out in my head and on the floor at the store yeah but i still ended up just getting way more than i needed so i ended up taking a lot back and then with the lumber we're probably into this bed and a lot of it was recycled. Like this whole thing was all like recycled chunks of two by four from other projects mm -hmm. that were just shorter. I'd say we got like 120 bucks into this bed. With the piping? With the piping. Yeah. yeah. So that's not and I'm, too bad. And I'm guessing high on that. And at my $120 estimation, that's not including the cube shelves mm -hmm. we put underneath. So that the cube shelves are additional. And we really were trying to do this on a budget. And so for the bedding, I reused both of, both of the comforters they already had. I just cut them in half and sewed them back together so it looks like they match. And mm -hmm. then the picture frames we had, they used to be downstairs. So we painted those and then uh, got the monster truck prints off Etsy. They were $9, but then we had to like pay to have them printed. Mm -hmm. um, but I think, like, I thought, I think they're cool. Tom said they're kind of girly, but... I no, they're, cool. they're just... <laughs> or they're like they're, mom art, like... <laughs> yeah, they're not, I think, yeah. Like if it was like really from like a monster truck no, rally, like, would that I'm be not, cool? <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not making fun of them at yeah. all. They're, they're still I good. think they're cool. Yep. <laughs> and then we did put up the board and batten made out of strips of MDF again. I don't love the MDF. Like this, Thank you! Thank there is a you. spot where <laughs> the nail gun ran out of nails, so he was shooting, but nothing was coming out, and then like, just, like, there's no way to really make that look good again it's cost effective we weren't going to do mdf in this room tom went to the home improvement store i priced it out added up what it was going to cost to do real lumber and he was like i can't i was like no I way can't. i have <laughs> to tape and mud it dawn I, I there's no i can't yeah. bring myself to pay for that so i was like will you just look at the mdf again so i had i think i estimated it to be about 150 dollars to do board and batten out of actual wood yeah the MDF is like $20 for a 4x8 sheet. So this wall costs $20. So if you're on a budget, I think you go for it. You just be careful. You just have to be careful with it. But And we are really glad this room is done. I mean, I, I don't know how we still... We've done so many projects and we're still like, oh yeah, two-week project. This will be a two-week project. Like how we well, still next, underestimate. <laughs> our next project kind of has to be a two-week project. <laughs> it's true. So now that this is done, we are turning all of our attention to the camper. I actually, you didn't, I don't know if you saw it, I posted in the community section. Mm -hmm. I was like, my mom said, if I were you, I would just embrace the wood color and go camping. Like, don't paint it, don't do all that work. And so I and put Don that says, on here. No! So I was like, what would, what would you guys do? Like, everybody was like, just go camping. It's not gonna, <laughs> just to clarify, it's not gonna keep us from going camping. Like, we're gonna get this all done before we go. <laughs> right. We have to get it done in two weeks. It's not going to keep us from going camping. <laughs> no, it just might keep us from sleeping over the next two weeks. But here's the deal. Okay, so a while back, Tom and I, on one of our videos, we were talking about, I really wanted to spray the paint in the camper. I had seen, there's a gal, RV Fixer Upper. She sprays, like she, that's what she does for a living is Rita's campers. She sprays them, a lot of them anyways. And I was just like, I just feel like it would go faster. Tom was like, no, a lot of you were like, it's going to be a gas like, man, chamber in exactly. there. Exactly. Um, the time, the time and taping everything off mm -hmm. and making sure you don't have overspray and runs. And I was just like cleaning out the sprayer. Like, no, no, we're just going to brush it and roll it. So I found a video on YouTube, which I will link to down below of a very nice gal who has a camper that's probably fairly similar size to ours. And she sprayed it and it just made me a believer. And so I, I, of course I texted to Tom then I'm like, look, she did it, she did it. And I watched the video and I think Dawn only watched a very small chunk of the video because you were like super excited about it. And I watched the video and I was like, Dawn, the gal runs everywhere. 
Well, that <laughs> that's a that's that's operator. That's not the sprayer. Like you've sprayed a ton of stuff before. I know. Would like you you've painted I don't vehicles. Spray. <laughs> you sprayed the paint in our first house. Which is why I was against spraying because I've done it so much. Okay, but with all this being said, what are we gonna do? We're gonna spray it. <laughs> you guys knew that, right? You just knew it. So we'll be able to tell you because then after that we will have rolled a camper, like rolled the paint on, and we will have sprayed it, and we can do a full comparison. So Dawn's gonna tell you how awesome spraying it is because she will not be anywhere near the camper during this. I'll spray it. No, Bring you it on. won't. Well, because you won't let me. Because it will run everywhere. <laughs> I will be helping with masking. Though. Yes, you will. Yep. The other thing, so the, what got me on board with spraying wasn't the camper. It was that we plan on refinishing our barns this next year and we're going to move the shed and it's a galvanized shed and so we, we've seen a lot of really good products that you can actually paint galvanized sheds and it will last. So I thought, well, if we're going to end up painting all that stuff anyway, then I'm okay trying it on the camper. <laughs> I'll get all my mistakes done on the camper oh, yeah. so the sheds look good. Yeah. <laughs> I think, like, Tom helped with some of the painting in the camper, but I did some. the bulk of it while he was rebuilding stuff and doing other stuff. And so I just, I, I couldn't imagine painting this camper with not spraying it. So I would rather mask all day long than paint. So... And I think it's gonna be a nicer finish. Well, we didn't love happen. <laughs> how the finish came out in our other camper. So I don't know. We'll try it. We'll let you know. Well, so. plus the other thing, this camper is extremely nice. Like, and we want it to feel very nice. We don't want it to feel like yeah. DIY. -y. Yeah. Like true. so, I think that too is like I was like, well, I'm gonna be particular about the spring. So hopefully, it turns out beautiful. Yeah. So. And like we said last time, it takes three to four coats of paint. So. If it were just one, I don't know that it would be worth spraying it, but because it does take so many coats, I think I think that's what's going to make it come out ahead. So, anyway, we'll show we'll you. We'll see. We will let you know. We actually only have 2 weeks. And yeah. I have a laundry list of repairs to do to the excursion before we hit the road too. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Next week we'll show you how it goes spray painting the camper and let you learn from our mistakes. <laughs> 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 yep. <laughs> Pretty much. It's okay. Stay tuned next week to see a runny mess. <laughs> All right. Well, we love you. We'll link to anything we used in here down below, but we love you. We hope you have a great weekend and we'd love to know, have you ever used a paint sprayer and had success or Air not success? Airless paint sprayer is what we're using. Mm -hmm. Any advice you have, we will gladly take it. Absolutely. Comment down below. Uh, thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>